Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about search for extraterrestrial intelligence. And well, you might be aware that we've been looking for so-called aliens or specifically technologically advanced aliens uh, for quite a long time now. Uh, the so-called SETI at home program, for example, has been around for close to about 20 years now. And well, you've probably also heard that we haven't really found anything yet. In this video though, we're going to specifically discuss one major project that discovered... Hmm... Nothing. There seems to be no one trying to talk to us in the vicinity. Let's discuss this in more detail though, and welcome to What The Math. And I really wanted to start with this. This actually is the beautiful image that represents the so-called extent of human radio broadcasts. In other words, it shows you in galactic terms how far we've been able to communicate from the time we started communicating with the world. In other words, this shows you hypothetically how far the first ever signal from planet Earth was able to travel across the galaxy. And here, by looking at our galaxy and zooming in a little bit, you'll notice that there's a little blue dot right there. And this blue dot represents roughly around 200 light years in diameter of radio communication since the beginning of radio communication on Earth. In other words, it shows us how far the radio waves were able to travel across the galaxy. And as you can see, it's practically nothing. Now, there's another really brilliant simulation that I've talked about a few years ago that I wanted to show you. But for this one, I can't really use sound because I'm going to get a copyright claim because it actually has a lot of popular songs. This simulation is called Lightyear.fm and it literally takes you distance-wise from basically today, uh, whatever the popular songs are today, um, up to approximately early 1900s with some of the older songs out there. And this is actually a brilliant visual simulation of um, radio signals traveling across the galaxy. Here we can actually advance a little bit just to see how things um, change very dramatically and you start moving across various star systems, nebula, and a lot of other areas up to right here. And so this is the farthest distance of radio communication um, since we started sending signals out there. And this kind of takes us to this topic of, well, searching for extraterrestrial intelligence, because that's kind of what we think the technologically advanced aliens might be doing too. Maybe they're blasting music, maybe they're uh, sending signals to each other, trying to communicate with other planets, or maybe they're just basically sending signals to other aliens that might be out there, because we've actually done that as well. And so we're listening and we're trying to discover something, anything. And the biggest project to date is, of course, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, connected to the Berkeley SETI at home that I actually ran for a few years myself, which is basically like the simulation you run on your computer that uses data from these telescopes and then crunches the numbers and tries to find anything. But the biggest modern project is actually this right here. This is Project Breakthrough Listen that has been sponsored and was able to raise up to about $100 million on this specific task, finding aliens. And the amount of telescope time that was awarded to this project over the years is actually kind of mind-blowing. We've literally been able to listen and also look at the skies from various different perspectives, various different frequencies for a very long time now. This project has actually been very active in the last few years and um, has been consecutively every six months releasing the data that's publicly available for everyone to look at and to see if they discover anything there. But as I mentioned in the beginning, so far nothing. What is this project though? Well, it's actually kind of connected to the famous Breakthrough Starshot project that I'm sure you've heard of by now, where we're basically are planning to use these really powerful lasers to uh, propel these tiny uh, spacecraft to the nearby um, Alpha Centauri, actually Proxima Centauri system, um, where we're hoping to investigate what's going on there and find out if there's any life there. But this is kind of far from being realized. So while this project is still being planned, Project Breakthrough Listen has been actively going on for a few years now. And it actually reached a point where we can now easily hear a typical aircraft radar or something similar to an aircraft radar from anywhere within about um, 
160 or so light years away from us or from approximately 1,000 nearby stars. So if there's a, an aircraft somewhere out there and it's using a radar and it accidentally points at Earth, we'll be able to actually hear it. At the same time, another telescope that's um, able to see visual light is actively looking for any kind of laser emissions. The Lick Observatory that you see on the screen right here is actually able to detect um, lasers that are approximately 100 watt or so from as far as 5 light years away. And if it's something even more powerful, it will see it from farther away. So our telescopes have advanced to the point where we can actually very accurately see things. And the eventual goal of this project is to analyze nearby million or so stars and also um, very loud hundred or so galaxies where we can easily um, see things and also hear things. And the idea here is to try to discover something somewhere, specifically using um, things like, for example, the what we call quiet zone or where it's the frequency between about 1 to 10 gigahertz, and it's usually not affected by anything here on Earth, so we can easily see it in space. In other words, we're looking for various radio frequencies, which we think might be used by alien species to communicate. And although Project Breakthrough Listen only started in January of 2016, we expect it to go on for at least 10 years, possibly even longer, and, um, well, we're going to be actively looking at every single possible destination. And by the way, it's already looked at some of the more common sort of targets, including Oumuamua, which is the unusual interstellar visitor that we had um, last year, and uh, some of the um, objects like the famous Tabby star that we expected may potentially have a megastructure around it, but over the years we would have realized that it was most likely comets that were causing these unusual dimming effects. Nevertheless, though, this project actually listened very actively to this region, but once again discovered nothing. And by the way, if you'd like to read the paper about uh, Tabi Star, also known as Boyajian Star, it's right here on the screen and also in the description below. It does provide more data and more analysis on how they determine that there is probably no actual aliens trying to communicate with us from there. And so now we come to the actual most recent announcement from this project using some of the most advanced techniques we can imagine using um, a lot of telescopes, a lot of data analysis, and a lot of computers with tons and tons of processing power trying to determine if there's anything out there. And, well, as you can see from the title here, using 1,327 nearby stars with this specific frequency, we've unfortunately discovered that no one is trying to talk to us, no one is sending any signals to us, and, well, unfortunately, it seems that either everyone is super quiet or there's just no one there. And I highly encourage you to kind of go through some of the paper and read some of the um, techniques that they use because they're actually really, really advanced and very interesting. And here, from the entire sample of roughly around 1,702 stars near us, um, the 1,327 nearby stars were unfortunately devoid of any signals. And the uh, interesting thing is that there were some potential signals that they were not sure about, and so they actually used a lot of follow-up studies and follow-up examination techniques to determine that all of them, without exception, were actually coming from either earthly sources, in other words, maybe someone using a smartphone near the actual telescope, or satellites passing overhead and sending radio signals to us. In other words, none of those signals were coming from planets or stars in a distance. And one of the ways that they determine all of this is by using billions of various um, radio channels to try to actually establish where the source of the signal is. They also made sure that the actual signal was not moving across the skies because this would probably be an airplane or some kind of a um, satellite if it was moving too fast. So every signal they looked at was unfortunately that. It was just not coming from stars or planetary objects or galaxies. And although on the one hand, it's sort of sad that we didn't discover anything, on the other hand, it sort of also gives me a sense of relief that there is no unknown species trying to talk to us right now, because I don't think we're ready for it just yet. Now, very interestingly though, this doesn't necessarily disagree with the super famous Drake's equation, simply because we've only taken a look at roughly around 1300 stars. That's not even close to the total number of stars in the galaxy, but as I showed you in the beginning, because of the actual distances involved and because of how slow light travels, there's also a very high chance that by the time that we actually hear something from the aliens or they hear something from us, either our species will be extinct or 
theirs will be. And this of course is one of the famous answers to the Drake's equation. It's very likely that we just don't live long enough to hear anything from anyone. Nevertheless though, Project Breakthrough Listen is still going to be going on for at least 7 more years and um, there's still a chance that we might be able to discover something. Now personally, I don't think we'll hear anything, but nevertheless, what we're going to be doing in the next 7 years is developing some incredible techniques that will definitely help us in some other ways in the future. The amount of new really awesome scientific techniques that were created just to be able to do this is already mind-blowing. And so by the end of the project in 2026, it's very likely that we'll develop ways to communicate at least here in the solar system that will actually help us colonize other planets and spread humanity at least here in our little bubble around the sun. But until that happens and until we actually learn how to communicate better, how to listen better, and most importantly, how to actually colonize planets, we're going to keep learning, keep trying, and keep trying new techniques. I'm actually really excited about where science is headed in the next few decades. And I'm also really excited uh, that a lot of billionaires and a lot of scientists join this project to either support it financially or to support it scientifically. And the way I see it personally is that there's really no way to lose this. We're still going to gain something from all of this. And even though some people might think that this is actually a waste of money and time, I'm fairly certain that by the time that all of these projects are complete, we're going to come up really, really knowledgeable and a lot better ourselves. We're going to learn a lot from it and establish new techniques that will take us to further levels, further studies and new exploration, and maybe one day extraterrestrial intelligence that we finally discover using some kind of a mind-blowing technique that we don't even have just yet. For now though, I guess we're just gonna keep looking, keep listening, and keep learning. Anyway, on that note, check out all of the studies I mentioned in the description below, maybe even considering joining SETI at home because it does help scientists analyze data, and subscribe to this channel, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe even support this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.